Hey guys, Nate, the Auto Outdoorsman here, and today I'm going to discuss a couple different uh, knots. Um, my buddy Mark over at Eat Carbs has been having some issues with knots, um, or at least he's been trying to learn them. So I told him that at some point I'd try and you know film. It's not to know. Normally I'd fuse these, but in this case right now, this is just a piece of rope I have laying around. It's not really good rope, it's poly rope. Um, just cheap rope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show some basic knots uh, that are pretty easy to learn. They're good for beginners. And uh, they're generally the first knots that I learned as a scout. So the best one that we always start with in scouts is called square knot. Now a square knot is good for using two lines, basically putting two lines together but not for massive amounts of weight. It's mostly just to uh, keep things together. So as you do it is you have your right hand, left hand. So we do go right over left and under, then left over right and then under. Then tie it and you got yourself a square knot. One of the ways you can tell you have a square knot is when you do this, it kind of undoes itself. And uh, sometimes if you want to Make a little bit more strong. What you do is you can tie these ends to the rope. Well, let's do that one more time, just so we have that correct. It is, you have your right and your left, right over left and under, then left over right and under. Then you have your square knot. It's a simple knot. That's a good one to learn. It kind of gets you used to working with the rope. As a scout, we basically could tie these behind our backs in the dark, uh, in a downpour, yada yada yada. Um, this is a knot that's really good for beginners and it's a good one for trying to memorize it and it binds up and I find it holds a lot of tension but I've heard other stories. Um, so I generally just use it if I need to fuse two ropes together. Another one is the bowline. So there's a simple story with the bowline, and the benefit of the bowline is it allows you to have a loop that doesn't adjust itself. So what you do is you make, um, essentially what you do is you make a hole, and you kind of feel like a hole in a tree. So then the story goes, um, there's a story that generally people use when learning this knot. Um, other people have different methods, but this is how I was taught. So you have the hole, the tree, and the bunny. The bunny comes out of the hole, goes around the tree, checking around, and then sees danger. Goes back in the hole, and then what you do is you just pull up the tree, and it binds it. I'm gonna wait until this plane goes over, and then I'll do that again. So again, for the bowline, we have the hole, let's get this right, so we have the hole, the tree, see how I kind of have these looped over, and the bunny. Bunny goes through the hole, around the tree, sees danger, and it goes back down the hole, then you just pull up on it to bind it, and again, you get a bowline. Benefit of this is you, this will not undo itself, it binds. This is good if you're trying to do set up a shelter with a uh, trucker's hitch, um, where you can literally just, you can tie it around there, pull the rope through it, and then boom. I actually use this knot a lot when I am trying to do a ridge line. Um, and not even just for camping, I've used it a lot when I'm uh, helping people move or if I uh, just need to hang up my uh, gear. The possibilities of this are endless. Um, one of the tricks that I use when learning knots is you just, not only do you keep practicing them with uh, just a small couple feet of rope that you keep in your pocket, but the knot also you use them and you try and use them in your daily life. Um, that's one of the tricks that I've always done. So I'm going to do the bowline one more time. So 
So we have the tree and the hole. And what we do, rabbit goes through the hole, comes out of the hole, goes around, checks out the tree, sees danger, goes back down the hole, and then you can just pull up on the tree and see how that's starting to bind on it. And what happens is boom. And then I have this entire loop. This isn't going to undo. You can do it bigger. Um, it's a way that you can also, uh, like, I was taught this is a way that you can use it to um, pull someone out of a hole, but it would be painful. Um, I mean, everyone knows the overhand knot, so I don't think anyone needs to know needs to have me do a overhand knot for you. I mean, that's easy. But, um, another fun one to do that I occasionally do my, like when I'm bored, is actually called the sheep shank. This is just one for fun. Uh, it helps shorten rope and you can also find other applications for it. So what you do is you kind of create an S like this. You then make a loop, pull the loop over the hole, making sure that goes under. You tighten, then do the same thing on both sides, and bam, a sheep shank. Um, this one I do for fun. I will fully admit it, I do this one for fun in the office just one on board and I mean it, it comes undone pretty simply um, well, it's a good way of shortening rope but again you make an S you make a loop come down make another loop in here and voila now these are just a couple simple knots. I have a lot more up my sleeve, but here's a couple that kind of get you used to working with knot, with working with rope. Um, there's another one you can do, which is called the clove hitch. I'll just show it here on my finger real quick, but you can do it on a stick. So what you do is you wrap once, wrap twice to create that X. And then the third time, you go onto the rope, Then you tighten. Sometimes, the, the problem is with poly rope, poly rope comes undone really well, really quickly. So, what I have a tendency of doing is I, I've stopped using this stuff. Um, but it's, it's cheap. And it's good if you just need a bit of rope around the house. Um, what you do is again, you just tuck that under. That like that and pull and, and it holds. You can put a stop knot in here if you want, but if you know how if you are good at tying this, it will not come undone. I've used it to hold things. Um, let's see, uh, there's also the top line, which it's all um, there's a top line and the slip knot. Uh, I forget which way is which, but I have a trick to remembering which one you use. So what you do is create a loop and bring it under like that. And what you'll do is go one, two. Now these are two different forms of slip knots. Now my trick is what way you don't want it to slide, though poly rope is horrible for this kind of stuff. Um, what way you don't want it to slide, see how it's not pulling in? You put a double loop. Then the other way, even when it's under tension, it will allow it to move. But if you have that double knot on either, whatever side you want it on, that double loop will prevent it from, that under tension will prevent it from slipping the other direction in most cases. Again, 
knowing which ropes to use for which applications is very important but understanding the knots is the same for every rope we'll have a discussion on ropes later on which ones are good for what but in cases like poly rope I find poly ropes horrible for knots but if you see under tension it's not really going back but under tension I can still so I believe this one's a taut line so then you just kind of loosen it up and there we go boom it's under tension it's stuck but it can be adjusted that's the advantage of having certain types of slip knots on your belt or in your toolkit and then I mean they're not too hard to get off it. These ones are ones I used a lot before I used the trucker's hitch. Uh, but the trucker's hitch I'll approach later on um, when I do a little bit more advanced knots. Um, my name is Nate. I'm the Otter Outdoorsman. These are a few knots to know. You have a good day.